Do you know the difference between a restraining order and a protective order? People often come to me and ask if they can get a restraining order when what they really need is a protective order. So I wanna explain the terms so that when you talk to an attorney, you can ask for what you really need. My name is Laura Hurd, and I've been practicing family law in San Antonio, Texas for more than 34 years. Let me define the terms for you. A protective order is used in family law in cases of domestic violence. And that would be where you can swear to specific instances, hopefully with dates, of recent instances of physical violence or threats of bodily injury or death. And those things, um, once they become a protective order, the police can arrest that person on the spot just for being there because they are not supposed to come within a certain distance of you. A restraining order, on the other hand, doesn't have that kind of power for the police to arrest someone just for being there. The restraining order is a court order that would prohibit them from doing things, but if the police come and that person has violated a restraining order, unless there's an actual crime taking place, the police are gonna tell you that it's a civil dispute and that you have to take it to the judge. And so you file a motion, you go before the judge, you explain how the um, restraining order was violated, and then the judge decides what to do about the contempt of court situation. Now, historically, whenever we would file for divorce, most of the time, attorneys would also request a temporary restraining order. And in the past, that TRO, as it was called, or temporary restraining order, would be a long list of things that we did not want to happen while the divorce was pending, such as hiding the children, destroying property, selling property, um, hiding uh, assets, and things like that. With a temporary restraining order, it's only good for 14 days because you can get one without giving notice to the other side. And so after you get the temporary restraining order, within 14 days, you have to have a temporary orders hearing. At that hearing, you're asking the judge to make the temporary restraining order into a temporary injunction. The temporary injunction is good for as long as the divorce is pending. So temporary restraining order is only good for 14 days. Temporary injunction can be good for years as long as the divorce is still pending. And at the end of the case, when you have a final decree of divorce, you can put a permanent injunction in the final decree of divorce. First, let me talk about a case where there's no domestic violence. I had a client, um, we'll just call him Juan, and Juan came to me at first, he was separated from his wife, but not really ready to get divorced yet. And he was concerned, he wanted a restraining order to keep his wife from selling his boat, destroying his golf clubs, um, hiding the children, and taking money out of the joint bank account. The bad news is I can't do that without filing for divorce. The community property, the, the things bought during the marriage, she had every right to do those things. She could sell them, destroy them, give them away because they're community property and there was no divorce pending and no order that said that she couldn't do that. Um, hide the kids. Both parties have equal rights to the kids. But until you get a court order in place, she has the right to do that with the kids. And so um, the remedy is to go ahead and file for divorce and then request um, the temporary restraining order or there should be a standing order. So part of the good news is that most counties in Texas have a standing order in place now. Bear County, Comal County, Guadalupe County, most counties in Texas, the minute you file for divorce, you have to attach a standing order which says that the parties are prohibited from destroying property, selling or transferring assets, um, hiding the kids, removing them from daycare, harassing phone calls, uh, vulgar and harassing language. Uh, there's a long list of things that you cannot do um, while that divorce is pending. 
As soon as you file for divorce, you serve the other side with the order. That standing order is as good as a temporary restraining order. Um, misconceptions, though, occur. In the standing order, I often have people come and tell me that they can't see their spouse or talk to their spouse because of the standing order. And that's just not true. That's not what it says. The standing order says you cannot talk to your spouse with abusive or harassing language or offensive language. As long as you're polite and civil, you can talk to your spouse. People will often also say they can't take the kids on vacation to see grandma or leave the state or the country even because of the standing order. And that's, again, not what the standing order says. It doesn't say you can't leave the county. It just says you cannot change the children's residence out of county or out of state. So as long as you're not permanently changing their residence, you can go on vacation or a short trip with the kids. I had another case, and we'll call this lady Mary. Mary came to me, and we were able to get a protective order for her. Her son had, um, not her son, her husband had showed her his gun and said she better watch out or she might find herself dead. Now, he didn't actually say he was going to kill her, but that is a credible threat that a reasonable person would be afraid of. It sounds like he intended to do that and um there was uh you know a message there that he got across that she um had a reason to fear for her own life or bodily injury and so we were able to get a protective order that said that he was not able to come within a certain um distance of of her house her job her um, school or within a certain distance of her. Um, now the house was community property, but that didn't matter. He couldn't come within that certain distance of his own community property house while the protective order was in effect. And you don't have to be married to get a protective order. You can get a protective order even if you were never married to this person. Not all domestic violence involves a threat of imminent bodily injury. There are other forms of domestic violence. If a person is keeping you from your friends and family, just isolating you, um, calling you names all the time, um, hurting your pets or destroying your property, and controlling the money to the extent that you cannot do anything without that spouse's permission, that's domestic violence, and you need to get help. Um, call the battered women's shelter. That situation is not gonna get better without intervention, and it could get a whole lot worse. So if you're in a situation that involves domestic violence in any form, even if it's not something you can get a protective order against, right now in this, with this device that you're using to listen to this video, with, with your cell phone or your laptop, Google Family Violence Prevention Services. Go to their website and get some help on making a plan for making that situation better for you. And if um, you um, don't find anything on family violence prevention in your area, nationwide you can call 1-800-799-SAFE, S-A-F-E, 1-800-799-SAFE, and they will lead you to a domestic violence um, assistance program in your area, no matter where you are in the nation. My name is Laura D. Hurd, and I can help you do a protective order as a private attorney. You could also go to your district attorney and ask them to help you free of charge to get a protective order. So if you need a protective order, don't let lack of money keep you from getting one. If you're in an abusive situation, please get help immediately. And if you want more information about the difference between protective orders and restraining orders and standing orders, Give me a call, 655-9090. I do. I did. I'm done. Come see me.